right. Hi. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming this, uh, this evening. It's lovely to have you all here. Um, <clears throat> my name is uh, Stanislav Kromo. Uh, I'm a WordPress developer at Anton Bladet. Uh, I've been to this group a lot of times. You've probably seen me around. Uh, I'm on various social media. So I work at Anton Bladet, which is part of the uh, Shipset Media Group, which is a Norwegian media conglomerate uh, with about uh, 7,000 employees. And here are some of the brands who we have that you might uh, recognize. And we do all kinds of sites, tours often loaded. We do a lot of journalism. Uh, we also do uh, some fashion, some viral content, and so on. But that's not what this talk is about. This talk is about WordPress, uh, PHP 7, and kind of what that means for, for WordPress. So uh, it's going to be about the what I call the time to first byte dilemma. We're going to talk about the 1000 millisecond time to glass barrier. Static caching, PHP 7, um, PHP 7 for WordPress performance, and how you can actually get started with PHP 7 and WordPress today. So, has, has anyone heard of the term time to first byte? A couple of people. We can just read the definition here. Time to first byte is a measurement used as an indication of the responsiveness of a web server. So, time to first byte measures the duration from the browser making a request to the first byte of the page being received by the client's browser. What it basically means is when somebody visits your site, um, the time it takes for WordPress to, to figure out that, oh, hey, I should start loading, getting everything from the database, formatting the content, and so on, and then returning it, that's the time to first byte. So fairly lengthy process. And if you're using uh, the Chrome DevTools, they actually tell you the time first byte for every request, you can see by, by um, <coughs> I think you hover or you hover over the timeline to see the, um, to see the time to first byte. <clears throat> so why does WordPress have a time to first byte problem? Well, it's because WordPress is, you know, constantly worst in class when it comes to time to first byte as compared to other CMS systems. Unfortunate, but true. So you can see here that they've compared a number of, of CMS systems, some proprietary, some non. So this is from a company, I don't remember the name, but there's links at the end of the presentation. And they took like a huge amount of, of sites that they operate and looked at the average time to, uh, first byte, which is the time to first byte. And as you can see, WordPress, self-hosted WordPress, is at the very end of the, of the spectrum, unfortunately. So it, it is a problem. It takes a long time. And you can see that the, the average time was somewhere around 1.1 seconds. And <clears throat> here's a very um, popular uh, graph that shows uh, how users perceive uh, time, basically, when they're using the computer. So we can see that, you know, 0 to 100 millisecond, that feels like it's happening right now. 100 to 300 milliseconds feels a bit sluggish. 300 to 1, 300 milliseconds to 1 second feels like something's happening, but at least I'm getting stuff done. And basically everything past one second means, you know, you're kind of zoning off. If the, basically, if the time takes longer than one second to respond, you're going to be thinking about, you know, what you're going to have for, for food later or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So that's what, what's called the 1000 millisecond time to glass barrier. By glass, we mean the device, of course, that the user is using. So we want to hit that. We want to be able to serve um, stuff in, in a thousand milliseconds. And that doesn't only include the time to first byte, that includes everything. We want the site to be ready. So it actually, WordPress has to do faster than a thousand milliseconds so we can get ready. So, <clears throat> and here's also stuff that makes it worse, mobile connections. So if you're on 3G, you know, the mobile connection itself can take as much as 600 milliseconds with all the different technical quirks. If you're on 4G, uh, it takes, you know, still a couple hundred milliseconds on this, at the very bottom is what we're left with. So this is the, the generation time we need to be able to have to get that one second uh, timeline that we were striving for. So we don't, we don't even have one second really because of, you know, when the, your phone has to connect to the your provider and has to route it to the data center where your site is, etc. So we, we, we have very little time, less than half a second really. And <clears throat> what makes WordPress slow? Well, 
you know, I've seen hundreds of WordPress setups, and this is a performance graph you can see here. This is just from, from a, a site I'm working on right now. You can see here that the blue part is PHP, and then we have some, some other various stuff like database, etc. But the most important thing is to see that, wow, PHP is a big part of WordPress execution. So that time to first bytes is impacted uh, a lot by PHP being slow or WordPress doing much, you know, I don't know. Um, so, so when you debug WordPress, like I started debugging, I was like, oh, how can WordPress be so goddamn slow, you know? I gotta figure this out. And so I put it in a program called Cash Grind, which uh, shows you kind of like a, a it's kind of like a, not a pie chart, really, but kind of like a pie chart. Each of these little boxes correspond to some function being run. And the size of the boxes uh, correspond to how long time they take for the total request. You don't have to really understand what it does. Basically, what you, what you can see is that WordPress consists of hundreds of tiny little functions and you can't really, you know, make WordPress faster. You don't just, you know, flick a switch and suddenly it goes faster. So you have to either do less, which you can't because, you know, there's a lot of stuff being done or you have to do it faster at the PHP level. So, so that's, uh, where people go, oh no, it's not a problem. I'm gonna use static caching. And as do, does that, has anyone here used static caching? You know, plugins like W3 Total Cache, <laughs> Deep Server Cache, yeah. etc. Yeah, er everyone uses them because like that's how you make the site fast. <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it's true that you you mask a little bit of the problem by doing that, but you still have problems like cache and validation. How often should I throw out the cache? Uh, what about dynamic content? What if the user lo logs in? No cache for you. Um, low traffic sites, you know, if you, if you only have five visitors every day, then none of those visitors are going to get to the cache because the cache has been long expired. So you end up having to do like a really, really long cache and validation times. Anyway, it's, it's a mess. It's, it's not good. You end up serving uncached visits in, in a lot of, in a lot of cases. So it's not really a solution. It's more of like trying to patch a very big problem. So ta-da, enter PHP 7, a new beginning. So. <clears throat> there are a lot of awesome like language stuff that I'm not going to cover here, but but there are like great posts about new language features in PHP seven. Um, but what I'm going to talk about is is, is speed. You know, they basically uh, rewritten the the virtual machine that runs PHP, and it's it's so much faster. So here's an example graph. This is not WordPress. This is some benchmarking application, and you can see here that the the y-axis is time, so the bigger it is, the worse it is. So we have PHP 5.3 here, and we see it's like takes two and a half seconds. And then it's like various versions of PHP. And then on the very right there, we got PHP 7, and it takes like something like 600 milliseconds or something. <coughs> so it's like, what, three times faster? So that's the kind of, you know, that's the kind of increases we see. It's, it's amazing, like nothing like this has been done in the history of PHP ever. Like there was, we thought there was like a big jump between 5.3 and 5.4, but that was nothing. Like look at this, this is amazing. So, um, so okay, fine, but can I use it? And yeah, almost everything works. I mean, you can probably, I would say with 99% certainty that you'll be able to use most of your, like your theme and most of your plugins. So like there are, there are a few plugins, like most of the plugins that either, uh, some do some like really funky stuff, like using, I don't even have an example, but just like, Plugins that do weird stuff sometimes don't work, uh, and plugins that rely on extensions. So like Memcache, Redis, like a lot of the Peckle extensions aren't on PHP 7. Some of them compile and work, but like it's not big yet. But but it's it's going to be like both Memcache and Redis are working to get their PHP 7 extension up and running, and you run it basically the same way you run PHP 5.3. Five point whatever, so it's 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 easy. It's not really it's not really that hard to to use PHP seven. Um, so if we remember that that graph that showed like that the average response time for WordPress was one point one second or something like that. Well, if everyone was running PHP seven, it'll be five hundred milliseconds, and five hundred milliseconds was you know approximately our budget for for make for returning a site that feels instant. So this is a big thing because that means that we, that means that the era of cacheless WordPress is coming. That means that for a vast majority of sites, you won't even need a static cache. You know, that, that, that hassle won't really 
be a problem anymore because PHP 7 is so fast that you can get that instant experience anyway. And if you just put a little work into optimizing your site further, you can do dynamic sites and, you know, like all kinds of sites that couldn't rely on static page caching and actually serve them in a way that feels fast to the user. So what is the easiest way to try all of this? Well, there's a little combo, like I, I'm not affiliated with any of these two companies, but it's a really, really nice combo. So DigitalOcean is a virtual service pro server provider and server pilot is like kind of like a management control panel. So if you use shared hosting, it's kind of, like, kind of similar to that. So you put up a DigitalOcean server, you install server pilot on it, and then you get like this really nice web interface uh, where you can, you know, add sites, configure them, choose which PHP version they should run, uh, and so on. I'm just going to show a screenshot from that. So this is um, me running server pilot. I have it on this one server, and this is, I'm inside of what they call app, which is really just a website. So I have a website here with the domain s1.romo.sc, and as you can see, I can pick whatever PHP version I want, which is great, and even support PHP 7, which is even greater. So you could literally just... Um, Put up your site and then switch between the different versions to see if it works or not for you. Um, even better, they even have a one-click WordPress installer. If you just like literally want to get up and running in two minutes, like you can do that. You just add a new app, <laughs> and uh, and then you you tick the box to install WordPress. So to sum it up, PHP seven is out finally. It's been a long time in the making. Uh, WordPress benefits really heavily. I didn't specify a number because, you know, every site is different, but I would say at least twice as fast. Could be up to three times as fast as PHP 5, 5, 5, 5, 5 6. Uh, almost everything works. I mean, just try it out. It's not like, it's not a big deal. And yeah, you can try it out today. Hmm. Here are the resources. If you want to know more, questions. Does it use a lot less memory? It does use a lot less memory. It's an excellent question. I'm not sure how it uses less memory, but it does use less memory. <coughs> Any other questions? Clear as day. <laughs> excellent. Well, that's me. Thank you very much.